You're watching a segment of Shiftcast. If you want to see the full show, head over to the live tab on YouTube or get to Spotify to listen to the full episode. Enjoy. We got some fun regional recaps to start the show today. We'll go ahead and kick it off, kick it off with Europe, which I'm having a ton of fun with. My boys are Damn. popping. They got wow, a top man. four and now a top two. I mean, look at them go. Yeah, what, we need to get I that. Mean, we need to get that Joyo apology form that I talked about made because I've had enough. <laughs> I, I just saw the whole RLCS community switch up on this guy. Last switch up. Not two months ago it was he got carried by Raj and Vatira. Oh my, my, my. he's just a freestyle mechanics merchant. Now I don't want to dis discredit Oski and Archie. I think Archie's having the best split he's had in years. Yeah. I yeah, think Oski is still premier premier, but mm. this kid, uh, you know. I, I'm very much a big believer in that players need to be put in a position to succeed. And every time the Joyo's put in a pos position to succeed, yeah. he succeeds. So that kind of means he's a superstar, right? Um, and now you have a, a player who in RLCS X and Archie, we were saying was, you know, the future of Europe. And obviously he has some health issues, so it never came in there. But he's been able to look as good as anybody. I think Oski has finally really fit in on the team. I think he has a really defined role as a first man and I'm loving it. And, and yeah, listen, They're rolling. It's, it might be coming home. Like it, it might be, it might be coming listen, home. It, we might have to have, okay, start listen. having conversations. How good does it it's, feel already? It must feel feels, amazing. I mean, we've been, call, a, we've been calling, uh, Rados in Mr. <laughs> job security, mm -hmm. but uh, it's good now. Uh, good, sir. Yeah. No, Working feels, on the oxygen, huh? It feels great. I mean, I, I talked about this with some of the Oxygen people because they were commenting on my watch parties. Um, and I, I don't know if y'all have seen it, but I get like ridiculously excited. We're screaming and yelling. And, and I told them, I said, I didn't realize that about myself. You know, I have never had like a sports team that I'm attached to for some reason. I've never been, I, I'm always an RLCS fan, but I'm just cheering for like storylines like SRG. Yeah, when they me first, too. Right. And so I never really had something that I'm like, I care about. And I know people are like, well, you're just paid to care. But and that, that is true. I'm not, I'm not going to deny that. But you do develop a relationship mm -hmm. with the people that you work with and you start to care and you want to see those guys succeed. I, I mean, I want to see these guys do well. And so I get really excited when they play um, like this. And I mean, yeah, it has, been, it has been so much fun. But it poses the question, is it too little too late? We had a little bit of a slow start in the first half of the season. And now, I mean, of course, they're storming back into the race, but those French teams have built such a huge lead. And, and here's a big problem for Oxygen specifically. Um... BDS and Vitality were the lowest in points after Major 1. You know, they weren't, they, realistically, they weren't too far ahead of us. And then here they go, those yeah, two yeah. teams win the next two regionals. And we have Carmi Corp, who is the highest in points. They're the ones that fall out. Like, everything that we needed yeah. to happen, it went the other way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you can't complain. Yeah. You have no, just of course not. Of course not. Game and Oxygen are proving that they can do that. They, they've been warming up into it in the second split, of course, with Joya. Uh... They've been boot camping. They've been doing everything they can to make it work, and it's working now. I think you can only be happy about it. And what it's going to mean for worlds, I'm not quite sure. Um, but at least you're looking very good to attend London. Very, very good. It's not locked yet, but it, it's like you just have to perform. Yeah, as yeah. good or <laughs> slightly worse, yeah. and you're, you're I there. Think, so I think yeah, it's, it's top... just. You just have to be happy with what you can do as your oxygen, if you're oxygen. Yeah. I, I was looking at it um, the other day because I was actually really curious, like what would have to happen? Because based on the points right now, there's like it, we, there would have to be. I'm pretty sure that as long as all four of the teams currently in the major qualify for the main event, Carmen Corp is eliminated. I believe they're 19 points behind yeah. fourth out. So the four points you get from qualifying automatically would eliminate them. So from what I can tell, it looks like Oxygen is going to have to get at least another top two to keep themselves in the race and Carmine Corp can't win. They need to bridge the gap a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and then we're looking at a top four or a top two at the major. Yeah. Um, and obviously that, that sounds like a mountain to climb, but to me, Oxygen looked like a major, a major winning level team. And as we learned from the first LAN, you don't need to prove, you don't need to be the best team going in. You just need to look like you can do it and you can do yeah. it. 
right? We saw Gentlemates, they didn't win a single regional event um, going in, but they looked like at times they could compete and just having that level allowed them to go workshop and, and get it. So I would love f- to watch a team go win a major and actually qualify for Worlds by winning that major yeah. would be yeah. very, very cool. Um, it would be quite a storyline. I, I don't think listen, they're quite there yet, but they, they're growing. They're growing right yeah. now. They're showing what they can do week after week. And if they can keep growing like this, then they can become the, a major winning team. I, I'd see them as outside contenders right now. Yeah. But yeah. If, if, if Joyo wins the second major to get him into Worlds, they might have to rename the copper box after him. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Yeah. If you yeah, win two, if you win, there. if you that's win the, two, um, that's the first event that he went to watch was in London, and then when five. he became a player, he won it, and yeah. now he could be returning to it after a, a long stint of of struggling, not being at majors, not finding success. So there's a lot on the line, and I, you know, I think it's not the exact same scenario, but you, we we all remember when. Gale Force, Dignitas Dynasty was winning, winning, winning. Everybody started cheering for some sort of upset, some mm-hmm. something to trounce that domination. And like I said, it's not the exact same, but it is kind of similar where you have these four just incredibly dominant French teams or Francophone teams. And I think a lot of people are excited to see a new contender emerge. I mean, I was looking at these Twitch chat votes and I mean, it was 50-50 with Gentlemates. I couldn't believe it. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I you know, that's the... the um, Reigning major champions, they were runner up in the in the first regional. Massive so fan base. So I was base surprised too. to see so much support um, through the competitive lens, but I but I understand it. You know, people are cheering for something new, something different, and and for yeah, Joyo. They're cheering for Joyo, absolutely, no doubt. Um, it's exciting to see, and I mean, to your point about being happy about it, of course. You know, I, I didn't mean that to come across as a complaint. Um, would a lucky break have been awesome? Of course, you know, if that's BDS that misses the event instead of Carmi Court, we're in a phenomenal position. Mm-hmm. But we can't, like you said, we can't complain when it's our own results that have brought us here. Mm-hmm. Um, with that said, we do fall to BDS in the grand finals, who was on an absolute tear throughout yeah. this event. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. Through the playoff bracket. Yeah. They Through some changed. Stage, a little some bit up changed. and down. But then the playoff bracket, we saw World Championship Monkey Moon. I mean, exactly. That, that t- and, and not just him, too. Exotic. Drolly yeah. were playing out of their minds. Man, they Drolly. were just such a the the and I didn't watch super closely in the first series, but I watched the auction series very closely. And I the thing is, I don't even think oxygen was playing bad. Like they weren't, it wasn't yeah, they weren't pun- BDS wasn't punishing mistakes. They were just better. They held down the back line flawlessly. It didn't matter if oxygen boost starved them and they're on 15 boosts between the three of them. They just had it figured out. They had a layer. If someone was outplayed, there's another layer there. They played so, so well on defense. And then on the offensive side, they're so clinical. They just have such a good understanding of where one another is, where the gaps are in the defense, you know, how to how to um, constrict and strangle the defense of their opponents. They're, I mean, it was just, it was a, a, a an incredible performance for BDS and, and such a Absolutely. deserved victory. You know, first thing most players do after a win or a loss in in especially in a playoff playoff record like that is head to twitter and and sure. tweet like ggs to the other team yeah but usually there's quite a few players who are like oh man sorry for right how i played that series or we really should have stepped it up and especially this playoff records in eu it was a lot of all right fair enough mm-hmm. yeah they beat us. They, yeah, they were yeah. just there were so many matchups where it's just the stronger team playing well, not really having to rely on the other team, you know, falling off a little bit. Right. Just a, a good team versus a better team. Yep. It's really yeah. nice to see. Yeah. Um well first of all, it's kind of insane. I feel like no one thinks about this, but BDS, this is their first RLCS event win since they won the world championship. Almost two yeah. full seasons ago now. That's crazy. Um, you know, Not they've the obviously been the grand finals. Yeah. They've made but losing you know, every single one. They yeah. they made what? Four did they make Five? The, No, they made the last regional grand final. They made the then the two land grand finals in the last season, then they made the second grand final. And they've been a bunch of top yeah. fours, top threes. Right. Crazy. Um, but yeah. So congratulations. I know Monkey Moon had had talked about, especially when he got injured, he crashed his car or something that he didn't want yeah. to take a break because he felt like his time was already up. So, you know, for a player that many people believe is the best 
to ever do it. It's very nice to see him get a win, uh, you know, a little bit later in his career where maybe he's not at the forefront of the meta the way he is one he was at once. One thing I want to say about BDS, it feels like the entire time they've been in org, they've been in, you know, the monkey moon era. Yeah. They've always tried to play a certain way. And that it plays then the way that they try to play is extremely hard to achieve, but when it works is mm. almost completely yeah. unstoppable against. Yeah. And it feels like we've seen this happen as, I mean, it worked really well in RLCSX because they had by far the best player in the game and it wasn't even really yeah. close. And so he was able to control the tempo of the game because he was playing almost at a different level, similar to like a Zen now. But as we've gone, gotten older and, and time's gone by, um, it feels like we see this BDS show up every once in a while, but almost mm-hmm. every time they show up, it's as dominant as that RLCS X BDS was. Right. They were that dominant at the fall major. They were that dominant at the back half of spring. They were back uh, 20, 21, 22. They were that dominant at the world championship. And then they were as dominant as you could be against that vitality team. So I've come to the conclusion that there's no use in ever predicting BDS because you never know when that version is going to show up. But if they do show up, they're going to win everything. So you'll never catch me picking BDS to win an event. But I always, in the back of my head, wonder if this BDS is the one that shows up. It's over. The minute I see them start choking teams in in that midfield, I'm like, yeah, it, it, we might need to just give them the trophy and get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> well, a fun question to ask because you you, you brought up how Monkey Moon you know, kind of feels like he's maybe in the latter half of his career. Do we feel like this is kind of a, a transition period where that superstar for BDS is maybe drawly moving forward? Or do we feel like Monkey Moon is still kind of that guy for now? Well, I feel like that if Monkey Moon kind of doesn't fill that role as a superstar on this team anymore, it will just transition into more of a, a team play team where you don't really have one player that is as outstanding as monkey moon was on on previous rosters it's just i don't feel like you can't really be on a team with monkey moon and have one up over him sure you have to play at his level with him instead of trying to get the spotlight from him i i I don't think I, i think they have a pretty good team chemistry i don't think anyone is trying to steal the spotlight from anyone but you know what i mean i feel like drali wouldn't be the next name to stand up it would just be monkey moon kind of going more towards stepping taking a step back and getting on one line with his teammates i feel like that's more what we we would see like more team base there's some other teams um like I, I guess Oxygen before Joyo as well, where it was more everyone involved and not just yeah. one player standing out, you know? I, I feel like that's the future of BTS, sure. not Drali taking over, maybe on a different team, but I don't see it, see it with this roster. Yeah. Uh, what, what I'm interested in seeing is, is are we going to get sort of a G2 effect with BTS going forward? Because it is the truth that at one point, maybe next year, maybe three years from now, maybe a, 10 years from now, uh, Monkey Moon is going to fall off to the point where they have to move past them. Um, but as we've seen from this sort of new era of G2, like kind of moving between the, the Cronovi, Naps, Rizzo era to the Naps, Chicago, Rizzo era, like all the different eras of G2, it feels like the new players that come in adapt to the, the org play style almost, sure. right? Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, Monkey Moon's going to be playing on BDS for at least another year, most likely. Like he is their guy. Right. He's been their guy. They have invested into RLCS on the back of his individual performance. Um, Is he going to make a conscious effort to keep that play style in the in the bloodline, in the BDS bloodline? Like when he leaves, is is Drawley going to be in charge of making sure that they play that way? Right. I don't think that's personally going to be the case because I think he demands a lot in a very specific way. And I don't know if many people can. Um, I don't know if many people can replicate that, but in, in, I think it, if, if they're really going to fall off, if their results are going to go against them, then they're going to have to change their play style. They're not going to stick with something that's not working. Mm-hmm. They're too smart for that. It hasn't though. Like outside of a, a small stretch where it was more individual performances that were wrong. I mean, we're not looking, we're in year four of the BDS system being one of the three to five best systems in the league, in the yeah, world. But have sorry, they really? Sorry. 
have they really fallen off to the point where you're like they have to they have to do something different now no no that's what i'm saying i'm saying yeah, when monkey moon starts happens. to decline are they yeah, going to keep playing the same way no 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 way you don't think so no, so then i don't think it'll be like a, a handing off i think that the team will be different i think it won't be the same yeah. as when chicago and jane apps left and they still play the way that yeah they play. well an even better example than oxygen last season is Gentlemates, right? They're a team where they don't really have one star player. Everyone can step up, everyone can do their thing. I feel like that's the future of BDS, with or without Monkey Moon. Yeah, well, well, that's interesting you say that too, because I feel like Gentlemates is more of a, con a continuation of last year's Carmine Corp team, because it feels like Eversax and Itachi have a very, similar to Monkey Moon, have a very specific way of the way they want to play the game. And so right. they've now recruited players they feel are maybe more suited to that or maybe were are more interested in buying into that than maybe Vatira and or Exotic were by the end of last year when they started to really hit sure. a wall. Um, so I wonder if that'll be the same. Like, is, is Cassio going to be the, the, the coach for a long time and bring people in and, and, and teach them how we play, right? Um, I think that would be, like, personally pretty healthy for storylines and fun for like RLCS and RL esports in general, because that's the kind of stuff that you see in traditional sports mm -hmm. where like teams have systems and, you know, coaches and expectations mm -hmm. um, that, that, you know, you recruit a new player and that player fits into your system and, and, you know, they bring their skills to your style. Mm -hmm. um, whereas now it feels like, you know, instead of a, a, an organization or a coach kind of pulling the leash, it feels like more of the player, Pull for right now, you know, you mm -hmm. get these three assets, and then that that determines. So I think that yeah, would be interesting. Yeah. Not, I'm not saying one is better or worse, but I think it would be interesting um, as storylines for Rocket League esports. Yeah, I just think it really depends on if it keeps working. Yeah, if they can, yeah, totally. yeah. If, if it keeps working, then they'll keep working with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as they are not, you know, the team BDS, they don't have the, the the status anymore of a winning team, then they're gonna have to do something about it. And totally. I feel like they're smart enough. Smart enough to make those changes and not stick with what's not working. Because mm. we've seen teams do that before as well. NRG. For example. Mm. Great example. We also had uh, Vitality, another pretty good performance here. They, they come off of the uh, W in uh, the first event, taking down Gentlemates in the finals. Now, this time, they didn't make it to the finals. They ran into... The head smasher, BDS, who was, just, like I said, just on an absolute tear. But um, in their quarterfinal performance against Resolve, that may have been the worst beating I've ever seen in RLCS. That was tough. And, and maybe, there, maybe there were worse in the past that I just don't remember, but that was brutal. Well. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, belt to ass, as, as, uh, <laughs> as some say. Uh, nobody put belt to ass more than Mr. Zen. Yeah. Uh, who put up maybe in a in a in a playoff setting in a best of seven uh, at the level that they're playing at, you know, domestically in Europe, the greatest pound for pound performance ever. I mean, we're talking about a guy who averaged 711 points a game and had a 2.16 rating across the entire series, contributed to the highest ever open era across the entire um event rating at 1.51 okay so 1.5 and let's let's remind people that one point no is the average yeah and 1.5 <laughs> is is extremely so he was as valuable that. on the field as if you put oh half God. of another player three and a half players on one team versus three is like what it in that series against resolve it was like they were playing four on three that's how yeah. the impact that he was I mean, having. it showed. If you're yeah. just showed. casually Brazilling them in the last game to win the series, I mean... And the scoreline doesn't even tell the whole story. Like, if you go back and watch, for anybody that didn't catch it, my gosh. It man, was a whooping. They, they sincerely look like it's a freestyle Jazer <laughs> video. I'm not kidding. They're so, jumping up, catching the pass with a flip reset. It's just... It was unreal. They look so incredibly confident. It, look, it just looked like bully ball, man. It was... So, on, on the Zen front... Do we still feel that he's the best in the world? I know that that's a tough title, and it throw, we throw it around, and some people think that, oh, multiple people can be the best in the world at the same time. I, I have been of the belief that until I see someone else do what he does regularly, no one's taking his prize, whether he wins or not. How do you guys feel? No, I feel the same. I think, I think when he 
launched. You know, when, when he got his uh, <laughs> when they booted start. him up. Yeah, when they when 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 they started the program, I think there was a larger gap, and I think when he inspired everybody to you know try the things that he's trying, whether it's even like the controller layout. You know, all mm -hmm. these people are looking at the um, the trigger air roll. But that, that gap is closed. But I, I mean, I feel the same, Michael. I mean, I, I would say that from the time that he launched to now, he's been the best player in the world. And are there loads of other players that are very near his skill um, skill level? Absolutely. Absolutely. But he is still such an impact player. And I think this is an example of just how much weight he can carry. I'm not saying he needs to, but he is just a, a huge impact player. And yeah, I mean, I'm still of the opinion he's the best, best in the world for the time being. Yeah, I mean, he's in such a unique position as well, right? He's been in development since he was four. Uh, he tried to get into early access, but that didn't really work out. <laughs> Banned for a year, which really helped him to, to get through all the bugs. And in pre-release, he just showed how amazing he was <laughs> at all the French local lands. And then RLC, RLCS comes around and you're just a AAA, AAA player. It's like Baldur's point. Gate. <laughs> the minute it came out, everyone's like, yep, yeah, this is the one. Give it all the awards. It's over. You know, yeah. I, I, one thing I want to say, I thought that was funny. Um, so we would all consider this to be sort of an off year for Vitality, right? Compared to last year. Like, it's, it's just... The, yeah, it's only off because what they well, did was just unbelievable. Yeah, right, you right? can't all beat. You We're like, even, oh, I don't know, yeah. but Vitality, they're not who they were. They have more points yeah, than yeah. Carmine Corp this season. Zen's off year, where everyone keeps saying his players, his teammates need to be kicked... Versus Vatira, who has always been the guy with people compared to him, putting together a super team. Vitality currently has more RLCS points than they right. do. Like that, I think, is the perfect sum summary of where Zen is versus the rest of the world. His off season I mean, is as good as other teams. Right. All time super team. Is this the best team we've ever seen type season? It, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, let's not look past last split where Vitality really didn't look that like the best team or even the second best team in Europe. Right. Uh, and that was a, a team thing for sure, but it yeah. wasn't like Zen was just no help. I mean, he, he almost everything. dragged them to that final though. In that, in that final series yeah, there, against there G2. Were games, oh yeah, absolutely. There were games where he had to step up and he did, but it, like as a whole, mm -hmm. the first split wasn't that yeah. great from Zen. Yeah. But we still, we've seen how much he can do last mm -hmm. season. We've seen it. The first LAN he attended, he wins. The first World Championship he attends, he wins. If, We've seen that. And that doesn't just go away, even if people get a little bit closer, yeah. catch up mm -hmm. a little bit. All and, I'm going to say before this, if if my floor for a player on my team is Game 7 overtime loss in a yeah. semifinal on LAN, yeah. I think that's the best part. That's ridiculous. Sure, yeah. 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 That's what I was going to say. Is like you know We're, we're talking about, and, and you're correct, that yeah. was a little bit of a lackluster start to the season, and they're still top eight every time. They're your, one, they were <laughs> one goal away from making a major final, and we're like, what's wrong with them? Like, is <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. But, I mean, there's a reason why yeah. we thought no, totally. that, because they literally didn't lose before yeah, didn't that. Lose, yeah. man. Holy cow. It's crazy. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still of the mind that he is the best in the world. And, and but... I do think it's fair to say that gap is closed. I think there's yeah. plenty of players that have yeah. leveled up. And um, I thought Atto was in strength this year. Even in this. NA. Even in NA. Yeah. Same. I thought. I thought. Vita. I thought. Yeah. I think Kaliers is right there. I think Atto was right yeah. there. He's got to like show us some. I think Beast Mode is right there. Uh, there. There's guys who are right there. Yeah. Definitely. Zen and Vitality destroy their quarterfinal, but then they get worked over by BDS. Like we said, BDS did that to pretty much every team they ran into in the bracket. So, but now we've got um, Luna Galaxy, and this is not so much of a happy story. Those, you guys remember just a few weeks ago, we were talking about that new squad and Oxygen kind of being those two teams that we hope can maybe threaten the, the top four a little bit yeah, and, and bring some parity into Europe. And, and unfortunately, that now they've missed the top eight here in the second event. I mean... That's something the format does for you. It's basically over, right? I mean, it's no Carmen Corp, but it's... Uh, Michael. Hello there, you know, Michael. You were, you were pretty optimistic about that squad. Just you're you're what, leaning back a little bit, Michael. You have much. notes on your hands that you're reading? <laughs> Guys. Why are you covering your my face? COVID's, I think my COVID's flaring back <laughs> up. I think I gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go. <laughs> I don't know. Well, see, see you next week. Yeah, you know... I mean, it, You've got to admit, there was potential. 
that no, was no, worse. No, no. Yeah. I and mean, I, I have way, I've both, had but... way worse whiffs. Like I said, Shopify Rebellion and EU Moist were going to be our land teams. Like I'm not afraid anymore. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we down at, you know, if you join the Shift Discord where you can actually drop your takes in and have them talked about on our uh, speed taking segment, uh, Tox was in there. Uh, and he was uh, expressing some frustration about his teammate he was. teammate lack of uh, grinding, um, you know. And I think that was Recently? probably yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. right after they lost. Huh. Um, yeah, it was pretty pissed. It, it, he, he was, it was definitely he was emotional. It was almost right after they they had lost. Mm. Uh, he said that they had spoken about it afterward, and they had told the teammate who. I'm not going to say who it is, um, but did you guys can go back in. I mean, did he? Use he did. He, I mean, he yeah, well, heavily well, implied man. that it was a chronic. Well, someone, someone asked, like, whoa, why would you say that about a chronic? And then he was like, oh, I just don't care anymore. Yeah, so he heavily implied that it was a chronic uh, who was on, I think, 40 past two before regional, which is... 40 past two. That's not even day job stuff, so... Um, that's not even... I mean, that, that is a proper part-time job. That's 20 hours yeah, a week. Yeah, uh, but unfortunately, uh, you don't get paid a full-time salary for a part-time job, do you? Um, yeah. Either way, um, listen, this is this is Europe. You know, if you want to just phone it in and still make land, you come down to where I live because, uh, you know, you got to put in you got to put in all the work. And mm-hmm. if you're not going to put in the work, you can't expect it to, to reap any rewards when there are teams that are, you know, busting Brian. their balls every single yeah every single week to, to try to yeah. get top eight top fours bro and and look here, to you learn can, american you can be, buddy you can be <laughs> nice you can be grinding as hard as any of them and you still might not yeah beat them. exactly europe is i mean it is extremely competitive and very top heavy and the talent has consolidated phenomenally it's it's very tough to bust into that top bit yeah. but we also have resolve who had a, a you know a booming start to the split a top four after grabbing Razier's alongside that redemption duo of ivan and cash and now they ran into the bulldozer vitality. I mean, yeah. like I said earlier, that that yeah. series was just brutal. I mean, it's good that they make it to the quarterfinals. It is. But it, you it have to have some consistency. It wasn't just a yeah. fluke there. Yeah, mm-hmm. you have to have certain expectations for a team, and it, this is another team you expect in the semifinal. Yeah. So it makes sense that it has to go down in such a way is right. a little bit painful. But you know, even they on Twitter right after the game were like, "Yeah, fair enough." Yeah, yeah, were, yeah. yeah. I mean. You, it's it's hard to um, it's hard to feel it's hard to feel like they've done anything wrong. Like you sure. get top yeah. four, <laughs> you you beat a great team yeah. in BDS. In fact, they've done well. Yeah, they've done so well. And 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 the thing is, it's just been a weird split. Like you've had yeah. a team go one first eighth, you've had a team go first fourth, you've had a team with two fourths, and you have a team with fourth second. Right, so. It, typically, you'd have a bunch of teams at like four eight. Then you have a few teams at like four two or four one or two yeah, one. Yeah. But the four teams that are going to probably go to the major are have kind of split the points up like perfectly. Right. That a team that's eight four, which is in like any like I mean I think OG and Cloud Nine are both sitting in NA right on that fourth spot, and Resolve are eight points back of fourth. So it's right. really just unfortunate. They, you know, they they've done I think everything that they they could. Yeah, they, they worked hard for it, and uh, we come back back to uh, to Luna Galaxy, who maybe haven't worked as hard for it. It's really difficult, of course, to say how much your work will pay off because you can grind a hundred hours in a week, and it still might not be enough. Like you said, it, you never know exactly what factors into it. Um, but I feel like a lot of players have said that when they've been grinding when they've really been working hard for it it has paid off for them yeah whether that means get, getting to a playoff records or to a grand final that really depends on what level what team they're they're operating with but yeah i mean they great serve resolve have played their hearts out and yeah good to see them in a quarterfinal again because of it yeah they should hold their head high i mean you know, everybody wants to, to to make it to worlds and major, but not everybody can. And and they've they've shown some prowess here um, in the second half of the split. When, like we said earlier, you know, there's been even more consolidation, and so there's more teams that are are threatening for those tops. So, well, listen, we've got one more qualifier in Europe. Do any of the teams outside of those top four have a chance at making London, or do you guys feel like it's pretty well locked up? It's locked. 
It's locked. I think all these teams, um, but I believe they all basically need a top eight and then Resolve can't win. Right. I want to say. Or no, Resolve could come top two. And if and Resolve, Resolve would have to win. No, because a tiebreaker would be, sorry, top two would be 16 points. So they'd have to come top two. And I think the bottom teams, which are Oxygen and Vitality. ADS. Oxygen and oh, BDS, maybe. Okay. Yeah, they would have to come top. Yeah, I think eight, there's I think. a three-way tie, actually. So there would be a whole thing. It's, it's not happening. Like, okay, the, those yeah. teams are going to lock in. They're, they're going to make sure they get their stuff. Well, listen, um, I want that to be the case as well, but I can't say that. Not when we've got a team that KC went first, 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 and now they're 17th. Yeah, until that's fair. These, until they are in the main event, and and what, it's crazy, too, because you would imagine, like, main event is where you stress, but no, you stress beforehand. If they get into the main event, I'm confident that those teams will make it deep enough in the Swiss that they'll pull through or, or, or get into the playoff bracket or obviously further. But these freaky qualifiers, man, they're spooky. Do you know why I say different, just for specifically this final qualifier? Um, I personally believe that because every team but maybe five in this region are staring down their final tournament, they're going to be out there being like, let's just go have fun. Half of them are going to be playing with new teams because this always happens in Europe where for some reason everybody breaks up after the second last regional and then they all put together pick up teams for the final regional. So I think just like the lack of continuity and like the sort of lack of seriousness that's going to come from these final qualifiers, it could be bad. Like you could just end up getting peaked that, down by you're three saying that and players. I'm sitting there thinking like that but means I, I these teams are going to pop off. I think I think I think if any team's going to going to get uh gonna have a problem with it it would be gentle mates because they they play a very like clear way i think you're fine because i think there's i think joyo specifically if you try to do that silly like oh let's just have fun he's just gonna clip on you over and over again same with zen they they they've definitely taken it very serious i've talked yeah. to them on different occasions and and i mean this is it they, they i would they, they, i would be less worried about them than anybody because they actually have to like they, every point matters for them for the other well, ones and, like, and joyo's above. felt it too yeah exactly you know, he's missed a main event and i think mm-hmm. that that has helped them kind of realize like you can't you cannot mess around with these teams you cannot mess around in quals so yeah they know what it takes uh it's still gonna be an outside chance i guess for other teams uh it looks it looks very much like a done deal for sure. Vitality, Gentlemates, Oxygen, and BDS, right? Yeah. Those yeah. last three are equal in points right now, 28. Um, and yeah, Resolve is the closest behind with 20. Right. But it, it, it would be a little bit different if it was KC in that four spot. Eight yeah, behind, it, right? it definitely I mean, would be. Yeah. KC so right resolved, now. Not so. They would, yeah, KC like, would need to win, and one of those teams would have to miss main event, I think. Yes. Yeah. So well. You get one um, point for missing main event, so they could force a tiebreaker with a win. Huh. Because they're 19 points back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's just incredibly unlikely. That would be I crazy. Course, yeah. Can you imagine if missing BDS a main event? Too. If BDS want to miss, and then Carmi Corp go major... <laughs> Can you imagine BDS... Or, let's say BDS miss... And then Carmen Corps win, and they have to get up after like not playing the whole event and play a best of seven tiebreaker for their season. Dude. That you can't, you cannot envy anybody who has to do that. I'll tell you no, that. That'd be miserable. Jeez. <laughs> that would be terrible. It, here's the thing, though. We're, we're outlining all these crazy scenarios, and we talk about how it looks like it's locked, but we've seen crazy stuff happen all season through these qualifiers, through Swiss, at, at, you know, at every phase of the event. So you're going to want to be tuned in to these last qualifiers for every region. There's so much on the line. Let's talk about OCE. Fiber. This is huge news. This is brand new today as well. Mm-hmm. Fiber announces he is benched by Pioneers. They're going to be playing with their coach, coach. Who, who's also a very high-level player. Mm. His name is Mock. Um, after their loss to the Chiefs in top four, have the Pioneers, I mean, are, is this like, is this a panic button? Is it, What are we doing here? Do you think that they should have just stuck with what they got? I mean, it's it feels like it's got to be something internal. Oh, yeah. yeah it, it definitely say it. is. It's... Say Sorry? the thing. Say the thing. Say the thing. Say, say the thing. thing. Come say on. the line. I will say, say the thing. <laughs> Roster changes are usually to do with outside factors, not right, gameplay. Right. And in, in this case, we actually kind of know because in his tweet announcing that he's stepping down from the roster, um, he said that they weren't on the same line. The, there, there were some... Uh, the, some issues through to figure out between the players and obviously it didn't work. Um, 
yeah, it, it, it looks like it's kind of over for them. I mean, they weren't in the spot that they were last split, so it's a little bit harder for them. Um, but, you know, they're they're still making top four. They're, they're still up there. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a little sad to see that one of the contenders in OC is kind of making a, a move like this. Uh, really doesn't make a contender out of them anymore. I mean, their right. coach isn't a bad player, but I don't see them being the quick tip pioneers from yesterday. Yeah, I mean, and I think I think they they were they've been a disappointment. Like, let's be honest, we were all talking about this team maybe being the power the team to finally challenge power, um, and it's ended up being Chiefs. Uh, funny enough, who have pushed them the hardest. Uh, and oh Chiefs yeah, it's are, great for Chiefs. Yeah, well, Chiefs are about to make worlds. Like Chiefs, yeah, basically, they if they if they make major, they make worlds. Yeah. Um, which is where, you know, you kind of get the idea. Maybe this is a panic button because it's starting to set in for the pioneers. Like, Hey, we need sure. to, something needs to happen or we're not going to go to the major and we're not going to go to worlds. Our season will be over next weekend if we don't like figure something out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a disappointment. Um, these, this was supposed to be the team and, uh, yeah. power, you know, for all the, for all the, what's the word I'm looking for? The criticism, or I guess the, the non-belief in power. One thing you can't say is that they didn't do exactly what they set out to do, which was dominate OCE. And, pa- and Pioneers hasn't been able to do that, right? So, yeah. It's They're five for five. Um, so, we got Pioneers and Falcons, who could go six for six this season. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are the only two teams that could do so. Yeah, Everyone yeah. else has already had multiple winners. So, looking to uh, etch their names yeah. in the history books there. Yeah, it's well, it's a little bit of a weird way to go like this, but it's it's amazing for Chiefs. Yeah. To, well, that's to, what I was gonna say. Let's let's talk about the Chiefs because these are names yeah. that we really haven't. I mean, throughout the season, we really haven't mentioned a whole lot. I know that we've briefly touched on them that's here right. and there, but I think we've mostly focused on those those six players on those top two teams. We've got um, Chiefs, which is now or or formerly Kakas Minions, and like Michael said, they're unless something crazy happens, they're gonna be at Major and World, so they'll be that OCE two seed. Which yeah. is amazing because that means that Finn, uh, one of the shift staff members, uh, will be able to interview Finn, the Fantastic. player for Chiefs. What? what so else he's already called for, dibs really? on that. Uh, that's funny. He's already <laughs> called dibs. Like if Finn is making it and it's looking very likely, then he wants to interview Finn. Um. Yeah. I mean, I- I've noticed. I've watched some OC. You know, OC after dark. What's better than that? Um, you know, Hunter looks like the player I think people thought he was going to be. Yeah. Uh, it seems like, you know, he's always been kind of like dual committed to other stuff outside the game. I believe he's a basketball player. Uh, maybe he stopped because he looks locked in this season. And I think he's exactly who uh, we thought he was going to be when he kind of debuted as like the new replacement for Super Locky uh, last year. You know what it feels like? It's not the exact same, like, recipe but it feels similar to last season space station Mm -hmm. where everybody's looking at where daniel went at v1 we're looking at other things and we thought hey yeah space station will be they'll be pretty good with hoxer but Mm -hmm. you know we're not we're not really looking at them and then here they go they storm their way to the major it feels kind of similar here where i know i was definitely looking at pioneers i thought that locky pickup would be exactly what they needed to maybe even take number one seat Mm -hmm. and um here we have chiefs just quietly working away two top twos Kaka's minions, I believe, was, I mean, I'm not believe, I know, was in, like, serious contention for the first major, and, and I think they just ran into power early in the bracket, or they might have went out early in Swiss, uh, but they were there. Like, the, the uh, Shores and Finn have been, is it, is it Shores and Finn? Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they've been, like, right there, but I think LBP, as their coach, I think maybe, yeah. they didn't have a coach last season, so I think, you know, having LBP come in, maybe teach them a little bit more about the game, about sure. threes, Probably helped them a lot, and it, it, it's cool to see something like that happen. It seems like it may have been a, a pretty good team composition fit mm-hmm. for Hunter as well to kind of elevate his game a little totally. bit. Totally. So OCE because they played with Gus, I think previously, and yeah, Gus is that, very much like a mechy sort of gotcha. thing. So yeah, that could definitely okay. be part of it. Well, OCE is looking, um, you know, pretty well chiseled. Obviously, we mentioned it earlier with Europe. They've got to make it through the qualifiers. They've got to take care of business, but they should be doing so. These teams have done just that in the first two events yeah and for the old rlcs fans who've been watching league uh, play era uh, it's amazing to see chiefs back again because they were the the team that could actually perform internationally they were 
they, they had a clash with uh, the North American teams. Yeah. NRG uh, used to whoop them. NRG used to yep. whoop NRG every single time they played. Not every that single was time, a right. Like, maybe not the most yeah. logical rivalry, but it was definitely CJ, a rivalry. CJ, man. The guy dominated Yan, dominated Justin. It's like, like, what's what? What was his deal? <laughs> like, math ain't math. Just show math. up and whoop whoop one all time like great player, and then they're like a great team, and then just kind of fall out. I mean, he did make that top four, but you know, you know. Yeah, talking. and so they disbanded in early 2020, mm-hmm. um, before COVID even hit, and so we didn't even go online yet, and now they're so back. So back. Exciting times. Well, we've got some more excitement over in APAC because we have been wrong again. We have no idea what we're talking about when it comes to APAC. We cannot What's figure new? it out. Or maybe, maybe we are wielding our powers for good and making that region as exciting as possible. We've got a showdown between Elevate and Gladiators. Each of them has one, one regional, the other coming second in that regional as well. So they are deadlocked in points. The exact same amount. And just like we saw in the first split, it's going to come down to this final event to decide who takes that singular APAC seed for major number two in London. And there's a good chance it will also decide Worlds. Mm. Well, no. Because it seems like that's kind of the theme across every region. I think they're deadlocked points for the this... whole season. Like, I believe that they are literally tied. Oh, are they actually? I, I, I want to say so. Because I thought I... there was a scenario where... It... It wasn't decided yet if Gladiators went to... Hold on, I might have read it differently. I'm going to check right now. Because APAC, or uh, because Elevate was at the Major, right? Yeah, Yeah, but I think Elevate came like top eight or top four once. Oh no, you guys are right. You guys are right. They're eight points ahead. I think there's there's a possibility where it's not locked for the Major yet, and it will have to be decided by Gladiators placements in London. Right. But if Elevate win, obviously, they were going to two Majors, so they're also going to Worlds. But it's 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 going to be close, and it's like we predicted so there we might not be wrong still we might we very much might be but <laughs> there's a possibility we get this right that it will be decided in the last region where we got that right and maybe even in the grand finals and the grand finals we need to talk about the grand finals from this past mm-hmm. regional because that was madness it i mean was it was such so a close good. series i was i was watching it live from the the co-caster from boy arroyo and gex um and Koken was streaming it in, in in Japanese, and the first four games were so close. They were mm-hmm. so interesting to watch. They were they were really two teams who were at each other's levels, right? And playing to their own level, playing to the other. They were really putting up a good fight. Low scoring games, and then something's broken, as Koken put it. Something's broken in that game five, and we had the highest scoring game in the playoff bracket ever. 12 to 6. <laughs> 12 points. Dude, it, that was like the strangest game. I went back and watched it. I was like, I need to see what happened here. Like, was there a DC thing? Tech issues? They just no. weren't guarding the net. Like, it was just like, let's, let's just, everyone gets the ball. Everyone gets to go off the wall. Let's see what happens. Like, it was like watching a, 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 a private match between friends who were just trying to, like, screw around before maybe a scrim. It, it was, it was well, ridiculous. Well, it, it went really quick. We had some quick goals, maybe not kickoff goals, but <clears throat> I might as well call them kickoff goals because they arrived from the same situation. And instantly, Gladiators were up 4-0. And 5-0. But by the time we were getting to that 5-0, you could see that Elevate... I mean, there were still three and a half minutes or something to play. Mm -hmm. But they were getting in that mindset that you have when there's 30 seconds on the clock and you're two or three goals behind and you're like, something needs to happen. Screw defense. All out trying to hit the ball into the net. And yeah, if you don't get countered, that ball is just going to roll in. And roll in and roll in until we hit 12. It was insane. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And also, I think it's a record or almost a record for highest. I think it's a record for highest goals, highest number of goals scored by a losing team. Six. Oh, yes, I saw that. Yeah, that's right. So score six I goals and still episode. lose the game. Is... <laughs> I'm surprised no one's ever lost like seven, six in our OCS. That seems like something that would happen in o- OC. OCE, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that might be something. OCE. But yeah, after that, 
it was over. Gladiators just ran away with it. And honestly, it kind of surprised me over again. All over again. That Elevate were so close to challenging Tho and his team. That's an achievement. Well, there's another example of why you need to be tapped into these next couple of events. Um, open Qualifier 6 for every region and the Major. Yen's talked about it. These performances at these events are going to determine who gets to go to Worlds. And Worlds is a ways off. It's in September. But we've got a couple of really, really, really exciting events coming up over the next three or four weeks. Um, and all these players, like, their their full season comes down to this. I mean, we, we'll... we'll um, We'll cover some more about North America and some of their team. Some of these teams have had their seasons ended early because they missed the main event. That was just a segment of Shiftcast. Full episode is on the live tab on YouTube or on Spotify, and you can watch another segment right here.